welcome students <coughs> today we will discuss about the drag equation for free particle and uh, its four component eigen vectors so <coughs> you are already aware of the drag uh, hamiltonian which is written as h equal to c alpha dot p plus b time naught c square if you expand this alpha dot p you can write it alpha x p x plus alpha y p y plus alpha z p z and plus beta m naught c square and we have already obtained the expression of the uh, for the drag matrices that is alpha i or alpha x alpha y alpha z anything and in the terms of the sigma i so you can write it zero sigma i sigma i zero in the two by two form whereas beta can be written as i zero zero minus i in the two by two form and if you substitute the expressions of the poly matrices that is sigma x sigma y and sigma z we can write alpha uh, x alpha y alpha z and beta in the 4 by 4 matrices so you have already obtained these expressions for alpha x alpha y alpha z as well as the beta now since uh, these are uh, 4 by 4 matrices so if we see this uh, drag hamiltonian if we write the drag equation of course when h is operated on some uh, wave function psi so we need to say that psi can be uh, a column matrix consisting of four components and we can represent it as psi as psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 and psi 4 as a col uh, column matrix which is termed as drag spinal this we have already discussed and we have already written the expression for this particular wave function as well as uh, the drag matrices now uh, let's write the equation of the motion for a free particle we write it as h psi is equal to the same expression c alpha x px plus alpha y py plus alpha z pz plus b time naught c square into psi but we know we have already written the expression for alpha x alpha y alpha z and then beta if we substitute these expressions here so we will be saying okay uh, c p x will be multiplied to this so 0 0 0 c p x and 0 0 c p x 0 so we are getting 0 c p x 0 0 c p x 0 0 0 similarly you get for alpha y in the same way alpha y p y with the c multiplied and then alpha z pz you are getting this expression and in the left side you are writing h psi as e psi and psi you again you are writing as a column matrix of psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 and psi 4 so it becomes e psi equal to this whole equation this is the drag equation if you uh, multiply these column matrix with this one you will be getting a single uh, column matrix from this one all again i mean your first member will be cp uh, cpx uh, psi 4 plus you are multi uh, adding these component and these component and these component together so you are getting this kind of the form e psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 psi 4 and uh, this column matrix and of course if you can multiply this e to each member so e psi 1 e psi 2 e psi 3 e psi 4 and if you compare you will be getting these four uh, equations as e psi 1 equal to cpx psi 4 plus iota cpy psi 4 plus cpz psi 3 and plus m naught c square psi 1 and if further if you uh, do one more thing if you just uh, combine together uh, this psi 1 coefficients of the psi 1 uh, which is e psi 1 and m naught c square psi 1 so you can write e minus m naught m naught c square into psi 1 and rest of the part as it is a psi 4 again you have two component in psi 4 that is cpx and iota cpy so and and write all the factors in one side so you will be writing this in this form similarly you compare the second element you will be getting this expression and if you write uh, in the single side by taking together all the options of the same wave functions so you can write e minus m naught c square psi 2 in minus c p x minus iota p x p y psi 3 plus c p z psi 4 equal to 0 you, are, uh, you say it as equation a for the first and b as the second similarly you compare the third component in the uh, in the previous uh, matrix 
So you will be getting this E psi 3 equal to this for a particular component. If you take all the component to in the same side, you can write that equation C3, uh, sorry, uh, C and then D F are the fourth one. Now, this, these are the four uh, set of the equations. Now, the psi 1, psi 2, psi 3 and psi 4 are linearly independent and hence have the solutions only if the determinant of uh, the coefficients of the above equation is equations is 0. So, if we write that in the determinant form, we write E minus M naught C square, then 0 because psi 2, uh, the here it is, psi 1, psi 2 is 0, psi 3 is here, psi 4 is here. So, coefficients of them, psi 1, this one, psi 2, 0, psi 3 minus C P Z and psi 4, this is uh, the coefficient minus C P X plus iota P Y. Similarly, for the other one, here psi 1 is 0, so, I mean the coefficient of psi 1 is 0, so it is 0, e minus m naught c square, you write all the coefficients of cos psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, psi 4, so you write this determinant as equal to 0. If you solve this, you will get, you will get this equation as e square minus p square c square minus m naught square c 4 whole square that is equal to 0. Uh, or we can write it as e square equal to p square c square plus m naught square c 4. And further, if you find E that comes to be plus minus P square C square plus M naught square C4 under the root. And we can say that we will have two solutions corresponding to plus and another is corresponding to minus. So we can write E plus equal to plus C square P square plus M naught square, uh, square C4 power 1 by 2. Another will be E negative, which is minus of uh, root of uh, C square P square plus M naught square C4. So, it suggests that energy spectrum of the free particle uh, consists of two branches corresponding to two uh, signs E plus as well as E minus. These are two. So, the positive branch starts from M naught C square. That means if you say P is 0, I mean momentum of the particle is 0, then E plus will be equal to I mean uh, plus C square, P square, P square 0, so it becomes 0. So, M naught square C4 under the root. So, it becomes m naught c square simply. So, we start and we say that uh, this branch starts at e equal to m naught c square and as p increases the values increases. So, it starts uh, from m naught c square when p is 0 and extends to infinity with the p value of inf uh, going to infinity. Similarly, if you talk about the another value that is e negative, the minimum value will be Again, if p is 0, you are getting m naught square c is 4 only under the root. So, you are getting m naught c square with the negative sign. So, we can say the negative energies begin at e equal to minus m, m naught c square and extends to minus infinity with the, the value of the p going to the infinity. So, there is a uh, gap in between uh, these two values m naught c square and minus m naught c square. So, there is a forbidden gap of width equal to 2 m naught c square between the two branches within which there is no energy level. The presence of negative energies poses a very serious problem but was later resolved. Of course, I mean, Drac has given some solution for this. The Drac equation have resolved the above discussion that is the concept of the negative energy and also explain the phenomena like uh, beta decay, positron emission, anomalous Riemann effect that were not explained by the non-relativistic quantum theory. Now, uh, to see this, we go for uh, the four eigenvectors of the Drac Hamiltonian. So, let us find the, these uh, Drac vectors. Uh, there could be two linearly independent solutions relative to each energy spectrum. So, two solutions for E plus, uh, I mean, and two for E minus. So, as uh, given in the equation 1. A and B and then another is C and D in the table uh, in the previous slide. Taking the advantage of the forbidden gap, the four component item vector, we have already seen that psi can be written as four components, uh, could be portioned into two components, one with E plus, other with E negative such that say psi equal to psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, psi 4, we are considering that Vw, where V is representing psi 1 and psi 2 and W representing psi 3 and psi 4. So, V is psi 1, psi 2, whereas, uh, and with energies, 
E plus, whereas W psi 3 psi 4 with energies E minus. So that the Dirac equation can be written as E into Vw that is equal to 0 uh, this uh, uh, sigma, uh, c into sigma dot p component with Vw of course otherwise it must be psi otherwise plus m naught c square 0 0 m naught minus m naught c square into Vw. So this is the Dirac equation now. So if we uh, multiply them in the matrix form of course so if you multiply uh, all these uh, you will be getting uh, uh, column matrix over here, column matrix over here and here also if you multiply this E to V and W. So, if you compare uh, the component of these matrices, the upper component that is uh, leading to this one equation and uh, the lower component comparison of the lower component that is leading to this equation. If you just rearrange the terms, you can write E minus M naught C square into V that is equal to sigma dot Cp into W such that if you write v is equal to it becomes sigma dot cp w upon e minus 7 naught c square whereas from the second we can find w as equal to sigma dot cp in uh, divided by e plus m naught c square into v so these are the two expression we are getting for v and w so do one thing you just uh, substitute this w expression of w in the v so you will be writing uh, v equal to sigma dot cp upon e minus m naught c square into w so in, in, instead of w you will be writing sigma dot cp v upon e plus m naught c square if you do this uh, you will be getting this expression as e minus m naught c square into e plus m naught c square into v that is equal to c square sigma dot p whole square v. Now, uh, we already have this expression, we know about this sigma dot a say somewhere expression is sigma dot a into sigma dot b that is equal to a dot b plus iota sigma dot uh, a cross b. So, if we apply the same to this expression sigma dot p whole square, we can write that sigma dot p whole square means sigma dot uh, I mean a and b both are p so sigma dot p sigma dot p that becomes p dot p plus iota sigma dot p cross p and we know that p cross p is 0 so you have only p dot p that is p square so the term sigma dot p whole square uh, that can be written as p square only so we can replace this expression and you can see this this uh, uh, result from this uh, uh, very small uh, uh, picture I have then given that solution in another way by multiplying sigma and p of course in a simple way then you write that e minus uh, this uh, this expression of course e minus m naught c square into e plus m naught c square it becomes e square minus m naught square c 4 into v that is equal to c square p square v hence uh, uh, we just combine all the terms together we get e square minus uh, m naught square c 4 plus c square p square into v equal to 0 c v cannot be 0 so we can write that e uh, this uh, fact, um, factor inside the bracket will be 0 so we can if we can write that e will be equal to it will be coming that e equal to this m naught square c 4 plus c square p square so if we write e that becomes plus minus m naught square c 4 plus c square p square so we represent by v because we have initiated with the further v here so we are writing it as e equal to e v basically so uh, that mean uh, we do have two values of e v because e uh, we, e v can have positive and negative values so are the, uh, there are i mean e minus and e plus are the eigen values of v similarly w possesses two eigen values as e w is equal to plus minus e uh, <clears throat> the appropriate solution uh, for the positive energy eigenvalue of v can be taken as in the simple way as v equal to 0 1 matrix or 1 0 matrix so if we proceed with the 0 1 we will be getting some expression for w and it comes like this one whereas for 1 0 it comes for this one we can see how it comes and how we are getting the total solution from that one so again we are using this property this particular expression c dot sigma c uh, uh, sigma dot cp that is written in the matrix form we have uh, writ uh, written this matrix you can see verify this matrix by adding all the component together c 
into matrix Pz, Px minus iota Py, Px plus iota Py, Pz. Thus, <coughs> uh, if we uh, write the expression for W uh, with the, the expression of V as 0, 1, this is e, uh, C upon E plus M naught C square into Pz and this whole expression you, you must be keeping as it is so you are getting this expression with 0 1 whereas with the 1 0 the expression will be like this one you can verify this expression by uh, substituting the expression of uh, the v, uh, I mean, whole exp in that, that equation the expression of w and if you further simplify a little bit i mean multiply this with 0 1 you will be getting px minus iota p by here and pz in this this part whereas from the other one that will pz and px plus iota p by further you just simplify this expression i mean multiply this c upon e plus m naught c square inside you will be getting this expression of uh, w so there are two expression one is corresponding to v equal to 0 1 another is corresponding to uh, v 1 0 so the whole uh, wave function full solution which was uh, v w so that can be written as because we have two so we are writing psi 1 and psi 2 so psi 1 as 0 1 and the other two components this one and uh, the other is 1 0 with these two components so they have been written like this way so these are the two solutions you are you have obtained already obtained two solutions and if you consider for the case if p is equal to 0 in that case uh, the psi 1 psi 2 will reduce to the form 0 1 0 0 whereas psi 2 in the 1 0 0 and here uh, i can uh, tell you that uh, these psi 1 and psi 2 which you have written these are both forward propagating solutions and those these correspond to the particle solutions in particular a spin half particle propagating forward in time with an energy equal to the rest mass energy now uh, to find the another two solutions so now we consider e is less than zero for that we will be saying okay w we are we are going for option of uh, the choosing the values of w so w can be taken in simple way 0 1 and 1 0 and uh, further uh, we we have that expression for v which was in the terms of from uh, w we have already written over there so uh, e is negative so that's mod is over taken over there and v becomes i mean you just substitute the expression for this one for when we, w taken as 0 1 and w taken 1 0 so further if you substitute the expression of c dot sigma cp you have already that expression with you and then uh, equating the term and uh, writing them together so you will be getting uh, the expression of the v in that form and whereas uh, i mean with w 0 1 whereas 1 0 so once again you get the complete solution in psi 3 it is a kind of practice to you you just find that expression of psi 3 which will be v uh, v in for the upper two elements and u uh, w for the lower two terms so we uh, have two uh, components this one and this one and w 1 0 similarly for 0 1 this is the expression so you have this uh, you have already obtained psi 1 psi 2 so these are psi 3 and psi 4 are the components and uh, uh, if you consider that situation when p is 0 in that case e not equal to minus m not c square and psi 3 will be 0 0 1 0 whereas psi 4 will reduce to 0 0 1 so this solution describes the particle moving backward in time because and, uh, and, and starting from minus m not c square and as uh, you have seen this because e is negative over here thus the negative energy solution correspond to the antiparticle and the component v and w of psi correspond to the particle and antiparticle components respectively the drag equation not only describe uh, not only describes the spin but it also includes the particle and the corresponding antiparticle solution within it inherent <clears throat> so uh, i hope uh, you will uh, you will be able to drive this whole expression and uh, will understand the concept next now we will be applying this uh, whole information to know the uh, significance of the negative energy in the next coming lecture
थैंक यू वेरी मच